From the Story of My Life by Helen Keller. In this excerpt from her autobiography, Helen describes her first experience with language at the age of six. The Story of My Life was published in 1903 when Keller was 23 years old. The morning after my teacher came, she led me into her room and gave me a doll. The blind, the little blind children at the Perkins Institution had sent it and Laura Bridgman had dressed it, but I did not know this until afterward. When I had played with it a little while, Miss Sullivan slowly spelled into my hand the word D-O-L-L. -L. I was at once interested in this little finger play and tried to imitate it. When I finally succeeded in making the letters correctly, I was flushed with childlike pleasure and pride. Running downstairs to my mother, I held up my hand and made the letters for doll. I did not know that I was spelling a word or even that words existed. I was simply making my fingers go in monkey-like imitation. In the days that followed, I learned to spell in this uncomprehending way a great many words, among them pin, hat, cup, and a few verbs like sit, stand, and walk. But my teacher had been with me several weeks later before I understood that everything has a name. One day, while I was playing with my new doll, Miss Sullivan put my big rag doll into my lap and spelled D-O-L-L -L and tried to make me understand that doll applied to both. Earlier in the day, we had a tussle over the words mug and water. Miss Sullivan had tried to impress upon me that mug, M-U-G is mug, and that W-A-T-E-R is water, but I persisted in confusing, confounding the two. In despair, she had dropped the subject for the time only to renew it at this first opportunity. I became impatient at her repeated attempts and seizing the new doll, I dashed it upon the floor. I was keenly delighted when I felt the fragments of the broken doll at my feet. Neither sorrow nor regret followed my passionate outburst. I had not loved the doll. In the still dark world in which I lived, there was no strong sentiment or tenderness. I felt my teacher sweep up the fragments to one side of the hearth, and I had a sense of satisfaction that I caused my that the cause of my discomfort was removed. She brought me my hat, and I knew I was going out into the warm sunshine. This thought, if a wordless sensation may be called a thought, made me hop and skip with pleasure. We walked down the path to the well house, attracted by the fragrance of honeysuckles with which it was covered. Someone was drawing water, and my teacher placed my hand under the spout. As the cool stream gushed over one hand, she spelled into the other the word water, first slowly, then rapidly. I stood still, my whole attention fixed upon the motions of her fingers. Suddenly, I felt a misty consciousness as if, as if something forgotten, a thrill of returning thought. And somehow the mystery of language was revealed to me. I knew then that W-A-T-E-R meant the wonderful, cool something that was flowing over my hand. That living word awakened my soul, giving it light, hope, joy, set it free. There were barriers still, it is true, but barriers that could in time be swept away. I left the well house eager to learn. Everything had a name, and each name gave birth to a new thought. As we returned to the house, every object which I touched seemed to quiver with life. That was because I saw everything with the strange new sight that had come to me. On entering the door, I remembered the doll I had broken. I felt my way to the hearth and picked up the pieces. I tried vainly to put them together. Then my eyes filled with tears, for I realized what I had done, and for the first time I felt repentance and sorrow. I learned a great many new words that day. I do not remember what they all were, but I do know that mother, father, sister, teacher were among them. Words that were to make the world blossom for me, like Aaron's rod with flowers. It would have been difficult to find a happier child than I was as I lay in my crib at the close of that eventful day and lived over the joys it had brought me and for the first time longed for a new day to come.